Hey everyone, happy Saturday and I just finished a an hour or more, well actually probably longer than that session with uh, my patrons. We were gel printing with um, these, you've heard me talk a little bit about them, the block printing inks, Speedball. I love, love, love. I've been working with these Speedball on the plate probably for about a year now and I love them. They're traditional mono printing um, inks like on your um, block printing um, etc um, and also I have some Viataglios but um, these are water soluble and so there's they're traditional traditionally used on in printmaking and mono printing so there's nothing new there but I started experimenting with them on the um, the gel plate and I've been you probably have seen some videos of me using them maybe not knowing exactly what I was using but um so I thought you know these are inexpensive I'll have some links for them on um, on Amazon they are so much fun they the cleanup is super easy everything can just be washed nothing because they're water soluble so the in, the cleanup is so so easy the paints are inexpensive and the marks that we get are just so beautiful so I was doing a print sec session where you can see how some of them just come out it just has a completely different look to them um but I thought what I was what I started working on is just making some marks here's another example very etheric just beautiful etheric types of prints but um I thought what I would share with you because you know I'll be using these in in my um, book that we're working on sacred mother and I wanted some more images because I want to be able to um, kind of explore very like cave art and paleolithic neolithic the you know women of of the uh, and of earth earth in her form of cave of uh, archaeological ex ex um, explorations of found objects because that's the mother as well right um, and those symbols of her in the very early um, times so I've, I've got some of the I just put some right on my plate and uh, just using any brush and we're just gonna start painting So you literally can just begin, I'm just sort of making these sort of Vesica Pisces kind of shapes, sort of womb-like and just going in different directions. And basically what I'm doing is just working on mark making. So sort of think of this as a mark making session but we're painting right on the plate with these amazing inks and they don't they don't dry very fast they stay open a good while so it gives you time to kind of do what we're doing here and uh, come back and print so I'm going to get using this sort of this white tissue, this is the archival tissue that, you know, those of you who've been around for a while know I use. And I'll have the links to all this on Amazon. But what I like about it, you can use any tissue. Literally go to the dollar store and get some. But what I like about this is it's stronger. I'm not so much worried about the archival part of it. It's just, it's very strong and it has a nice um, feel to it. It's kind of like slightly coated. So... So look at that. Ah, uh, that's good. So we're just getting, oh, look at those. It's good marks. So I'm going to do some more so I can finish that page. So just, you can kind of go back over the marks. I can kind of repeat them. Since it's still wet down there, I'm actually putting some more over here on my palette. So you can see right here, I just put another dollop over there and I'm just kind of
oh this is so much fun and all you have to do is pull out your gel plate and um, if you have some block printing ink you can just get it you can get it at Michaels Hobby Lobby any place has it get on Amazon of course I like to work off the page too just to give so grab this right here I want to finish that bit and what we can do is we can also overprint so I have some things down here I was kind of playing with earlier so I can actually come back and grab these more dramatic marks and print right over what I already have so you can even get your your old gel prints anything like that and you can work on top of acrylic you just don't want to come back you, this has to fully dry so you don't want to come back and then do acrylic on top of it but if you have some old pieces that are papers that have been stained and oh look at that see that that's good even the like I'll pull out some of the stuff from our session for last week the papers that we um Oh, this is good so I like that a lot so we can let that sit and dry um, so let me I'm just going to take and I'm just going to use a piece to just act as a waste sheet just to get some of the extra that's laying there you'll notice that you have some places where it's a little higher, you know, in terms of the amount of paint. So just go ahead and put a waste sheet down. And you can keep on using that sheet to clean your plate. You might end up with stuff ultimately that, you know, you can use. Um, also, don't forget, we have our, our handmade papers that we've worked on. This will make a nice... I'm just going to do a nice circle, get it nice and full of paint because the uh, handmade paper is going to absorb. So I can put, I have some silver on this side and I can put this on the back. And what that's going to do, it'll give me like a double sided piece I could use. In my journal. So look at that. What a beautiful mono print. Good. So we let that dry. So you can print on your handmade papers. So pull some of those out. Let me get, um, let me clean this again with my waste sheet. Just keep on doing this. And I have a fun thing that we're going to be able to do at the end with all the rest that's on there because some of it will start drying but we'll get that off in the end let me just go grab the papers we printed on a couple of um, Saturdays ago okay so I've grabbed my papers that we worked on some of these coffee stain pieces let's grab some of these they're going to be good grab a few of these and then I also grabbed some of my um, sort of gel printed papers these were done on with um, chalk paint so we can print on top of these and got a lot of different ones over here so I'll just be pulling from this pile this is the um, the Venetian, you know, plaster technique. So, you know, you can use any of your other prints to work on. So let me get some more down on our plate. Let's keep going. Okay. So we can also do Sort of a dot pattern or because just think in terms of marks we're just making just very organic marks that 
So it may replicate things that we could find on a cave, you know, wall or just old world. That's what we're thinking. This old world mark making. So I want to do it on top of this piece right here. So I want to get it as wide. So I need another row. So just have fun with this. Once again, you know, no rights or wrongs, just playing. So I'm just kind of distributing the paint because there'll be extra, it'll be high and low areas. So I'm just hitting it again before we print to move that around a little bit. Okay. Let's go ahead and lay it down. I'm going to lay it on this side. I guess they're both, they're nearly the same. So yeah, get your stained papers. We're just taking that mark making on the gel plate to the next level. You're going to love these. And what happens is you just lay them out to dry. They dry fairly quickly. So these paints will dry on paper. They don't dry on anything else. You can put them on fabric, but they take a long time to dry. They will dry, but eventually. But everything else, it basically stays open on. Even your paintbrush, you can, I mean, like, I guess you've left on there long enough. But it's plenty, you have plenty of time to go wash and clean your things at the end of a session. Oh, look at that. Love it. Love it. So we're just going to have fun making some marks because that's what we're doing. Um, so now I can come back. So now I can just draw some lines if I wanted to. And that just kind of redistributes the paint that's already down there. And just gives us some really cool mark making. Just think in terms of mark making, because these papers are going to be used as papers in our journal, our book. So we're just making decorative papers to work with. Okay. Let's take this, put it on top of this. So yeah, just, you can put them on top of paper you already have or you know, just have at it. Yes, look at that, that's good. Love it. I'm gonna take it and put it on top of this painted area because there's still quite a bit right here so I'll get a ghost so it won't completely cover up the white print that's down there but we should get some interesting marks over top of that oops sorry my coffee cup is wiggling around the place oh yeah I like this look at that so we got that extra bit of the ghost over top of the paints that were down there. Let that dry. And let's, I gotta get some more on here. I'm gonna make some more circles. So there's so much you can do. Of course you can brayer with this, you can use um, other tools, but today I thought kind of introducing this. We did some of this in a recent workshop, and we do this on Patreon, of course. But um, I thought I'd introduce a little bit here since I'll be using those papers, and I know you guys are going to want to know what I was using. Just 
make them different size circles. Okay, so we'll put that on another one of our stained coffee stained sheets. I'm using the black because it kind of shows up really nicely and I, I think it's easiest for everyone to see, but I have, I can come back with some other, but I have gold and coppers and silvers and pewters. I'll put the different ones that I have down there. This comes in a box set like this, which is really cool. And then whites and reds, I've got all colors, but just kind of sort of showing you. Oh, look at that. That's good. See, you really get this beautiful mono print. So when it dries, you know that brushwork? Let me see if I can see. Look at that brushwork. Oh, nothing like it. So we're going to let that dry. And um, do some dots, just mix some patterns in. So just making some marks there. Let's take this piece. It's another tissue with just kind of a, I think this is um, Paper Artsy's buttercream. So I like printing using these inks over top of chalk paints or um, fresco paints like this one. It just, because the paints just blend into um, the the speedball, the block printing inks just bleed so beautifully into the chalk paints and what have you and just really get a really nice mono print to type of thing. So you see, look at those marks. That's just good stuff. Got all kind of marks there. And I, I just kind of keep on changing stuff up, sort of figuring out um, as it dries, as they start drying on here. I can take this right here, grab one of my pieces of handmade paper. Let's put this down. Just grab that bit right there. And then this, whew, just grabbing bits and pieces of this and using it in our, our book. Sacred Mother, oh my goodness, this is good stuff. Oh yeah, look at that. Good. Love it. I love the texture of the paper too. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take... get I have a circle there let's grab it put it right there kind of finish this print here it's a little circle there let's grab that so I'm going to show you what we can do that's good just showing you a few quick tricks so now I'm going to get my my waste sheet here and let's just clean it so you just get like those little wet patches gone and let me show you another thing let me get We have some gold. Let's use the gold. 
And then I kind of flip my pad back. So this is, I'll just take the palette and take that black and fold it down and then go to another page. But here, get some gold out. And I'm gonna get another brush. Cause I haven't gone to wash this one. So what can I find? Do I have another one laying right here? Oh, you know, the other thing we can use too, is I can show you, let's just use a palette knife. So of course we're gonna get the plastic one. It's over here. So what I'm gonna do first, show you guys. So, just kinda smooth it out first. Get it out of that little clump. And this is the plastic one. So remember, on the gel plate, you don't wanna use anything sharp. So I'm using the plastic palette knives. And I'm gonna do this on something, probably just on tissue paper. So we can just kind of spread it and sort of make sections to kind of create backgrounds. And when this dries, you can also come back with uh, with over stamping like we were doing with the paintbrush. So let's, you know what, I'm gonna take it and pull this over top of my waste sheet. Since I'm starting to get some marks there, it's kind of cool to just kind of keep on building up the marks. Oh yeah, see what we have here? So it started activating the marks that we have underneath. So the gold pulled with some more, oh, I love it. And when it dries, you're gonna be, say, be able to see the difference between, so you see how the mark pulled up in there? So there's some more there. I'm just gonna grab, you know, actually let's put some more. Now you could use the brush again, just showing you some different techniques. Of course you could use the brayer, but we're trying to get marks that we don't really want. Okay, so I'm gonna just put this over here. So those marks that are underneath there, the black, that's why I like to use waste, you know, I'll use my waste paper over and over again because the marks that you pick up from that are just so totally random. And sometimes they're the best things to use as backgrounds and, you know, bits and pieces. And you can come back over and stamp over top of these. Even like with my scripting stamps and with the new Asian stamps, all of that will work on top of this. Especially the tissue paper. Well, any paper, but you know, I like using the tissue paper. So I'm just gonna kinda keep on picking up. And the idea is just overlap. See, we're just getting some really cool bits. Now what we can do, we can come back with, cause we kinda clean that up some. We can come back with the black and you can just, the nice thing about these is that they, they kind of um, dry sort of pretty quickly. Like those are, that's not completely dry, but what I do like about it is that you can overprint nicely without it mixing too much. So let's come back and let's just kind of make some random circles to kind of play off of the background we're creating. So just think in terms of like you're making your own decorative papers, but you know, that have sort of your own marks and stuff to it. Yep. 
Okay. Alrighty, so let's come back and let's print over this. And you could just go on until you, you get what you want. Oh, yes, look at this. Look at those papers. Oh, and see how the gold will stay like it won't it won't um, mix. And you can just kind of go back over it and I want to put some more of this. Kind of just smushing it in there. Okay. So I want to take and get it this way. I think you guys are getting an idea of what we could play with this forever. You'll like these too because they, like I said, they stay open for a long time and they, they're not, they don't have a water in them. They're mostly oil. So you see how I'm working over this tissue paper over and over and over again and it hasn't tore yet. It's because there's no water in these paints. So they're not weakening the paper. And so literally, you know, I could just keep on going. So like there's some space right here. Let me just pick some of that up because there's still a little bit of And then I'll let this dry because I feel like we've gotten a really good um, piece. We can stop there, but you could see I could keep on coming back and build this up. Of course, we can um, spray stain this, you know, um, coffee stain it. But this is looking good. Like even if I want a little bit of gold up there, I can come back and uh, take this and just... And what it'll do is it'll push the the black circle back a bit. But then it'll give me some. And I can just kind of put a little bit. I don't have to, so you don't have to press down entirely. See how you can just pick up bits and pieces. So to lay it down and press what you get what you want. So see how I filled in that circle without getting rid of the black? So like some of these areas like that, I can just go down and wherever you kind of press is what's going to pick up. It's really nice. So you don't have to put it down and press the whole thing. Just work your, your areas. Just put a little bit more down because I want to So I want to kind of keep on getting some of those circles filled in. So you lay it down and then just where you press, that's the thing about mono printing. It'll just pick up where you pressed, you know, without getting rid of everything. So I want the inside of that done. Just press right inside and then we get that. Let me get something on these edges here. Okay. So you guys get the idea. So I'm going to let this rest. But how gorgeous is this? Oh, and when it dries, it gets so much better. I'll show you everything dry. You'll really be able to appreciate it. So the last thing I'm going to show you, because coming up on our 20 minute... I have this 20 minute challenge here. See how much I can get done with you guys in tw 20 minutes. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is, now that I'm done, I wanna clean this plate. And I'm gonna clean it with my quinacridone. Yes, we can use, so when you're done with your printing session, 
I'm down here reaching for the glassine. I love cleaning with the glassine because you know the glassine really does a good job of pulling everything off the plate. Sorry for all the noise it's making. And I don't have to worry about that stuff being down there. I can just, well, I can also, I can make more marks. So we can clean our plate. Um, just so I'm going to come back with this quinacridone and we're going to clean this whole thing and it's going to give us a nice base so I'm using the Holbein quinacridone and here again we're just doing a glaze It'll the, this will mix just slightly with the uh, just slightly with the inks, but not a lot because they're two different types of paints. So you'll see a little bit of mixing, color mixing, but for the most part, it's just going to lay down this really cool layer. And you guys know how much I like my quinacridone, but you could do this with a white. You could do it with green gold. You know we've talked about that before. Whichever one that you use, it seems to pull everything off the plate and then just really lay it down rub it out nicely so that it makes full contact and using this glass scene oh boy we'll make sure we put the link to this so those of you who are new and aren't familiar with this this is old wall supreme I mean you know this is gonna work beautifully in our in our sacred mother since it's very earthy. I see that book is very earthy and just, I mean, you can even use whatever, like my pot palette are these kind of warm golds, oranges, but you know, earth is green, earth is violet and pinks and yellows. So whatever your interpretation of an earthy color is, have at it, because there's absolutely no rules, right? Maybe you're more forest and more, you know, um, more with the, the the elementals and stuff it's all good it all fits into the story of the sacred mother okay so i think we've made good contact here let's go ahead and pull it oh look at this and basically you can see the plate is pretty good and clean there's a little bit left behind there not much and then look at the print Wow. Oh, I love it. Let me just turn this down so we're not getting so much of a glare so you can really see it. Is that not a fade wall? Oh my goodness. Of course it is, right? So I can see this being working into the pages of my book. And then um, some of these pieces that we did, since it's on tissue paper, you know how we can use our water brush and pull these off and even get the inside out and those become pieces that can be collaged on our work of course this this dot pattern you know becomes things that can be glued on oh i love it so i'm gonna let these dry and then i'll be back to show you them all dry but this is good stuff yep just block printing ink if you just got one color block you're good, but I'm gonna give you for the black and for this box because you're gonna like all the metallics that are in here. There's a silver, a pewter, a gold, and a copper, and they are all good. All right, I'll be back. Okay, so they're dry. It hasn't been more than about 15 minutes and they dry up really quickly on paper. So this is one of the, and, and they are very matte. So they're not shiny at all. You get a really nice matte finish. You see they're dry. Um, and they just are so, oh, I love them. So organic. So that's on handmade paper. This is our gold and our, you know, our black. And here you could still come back with Posca pens, do mark making over them. Um, I just love them as they are. I'm just excited about taking bits and pieces of these and using these as decorative papers. Here's some more on handmade paper. This is some on our stained paper. You know, you just see sections and bits and you know how we use things in our. This is one of the papers I did in my other session, but then remember how I kind of overprinted and just look at that. Like this element right here is just good. That's just a good collage piece. 
um, love it. And of course, here's just some circles, which we can use. We could, like I said, we can still overprint on these or just take bits and pieces and use them as they are. This is on top of the Paper Artsy um, butter buttercream. And look at that. Those are just, oh. Uh, here's some, some of the lines we made. And then this over top of, this over top of this background, I feel like it just becomes a piece that you could start collaging and working up on because it's just a nice background ready to go. And of course, these lines and stuff work into our work. Here we have a nice little dot pattern on our stained paper. This is one that I did. I don't think I showed you all this one. This is I did mark making. Did I? I don't remember. But this is just painting on there with the brush. And then this is our final one that is on the um, glassine. But we picked up a lot of good stuff there. Look at those colors. Just so intense. Lots of layers. You can just see the texture in that. So there we have it. I hope you guys enjoyed this session. So we'll be ready to do another collage next week. And I know that I'm going to be working some of these papers into that collage. I don't know what it's going to be, but I know I want to use some of these. So until next week, love you guys. Remember to thumb up the video if you enjoyed this. And if you're new to the channel and you want to hang out with us, make sure you hit the bell, hit all, so you get all the notifications. When the notifications come through for the premiere, make sure you hit notify me. And when you hit notify me, then um, YouTube will make sure they send you the link like a half an hour before, I believe. You'll get the notification. If you click it, then it'll bring you right into our premiere room, the chat room. We just chat it up and have a great time. We're there from all over the globe. And so many of you are meeting people in your own backyard that you didn't know we're there and doing meetups. So I think it's really cool. It's exciting. So, all right. I guess that's everything. Love you all. And we'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.